different story, and yeah. we have some severe storms that you're tracking right now. Severe storms are getting even closer and yeah. closer to the metro. Let's so go ahead and jump straight on over to Advantage Doppler 3D, show you these storms. And this is a squall line that is moving right on down central Oklahoma. This means we will have a wind threat with these storms as they move right on in. And again, even a couple showers were briefly moving through. Edmond. Now we have at least one shower and even a little bit of uh, lightning and thunder associated with that right over Arcadia. That's going to hightail it up to the northeast. Another shower here right over Oklahoma Christian. Another shower just west of Coffee Creek Golf Course. Uh, some rain over Enid. Uh, nice to get the rain without much in the form of any type of severe weather over Vance Air Force Base. A few lightning strikes, quite a bit of that it's in between Wacomas and Hennessy. But this is a severe storm. And again, these storms, or at least a squall line as it moves through, is going to have some powerful winds. Winds of 60 to 70 miles per hour. Now starting to see the leading edge of these storms moving right on in the Piedmont, right over Edmond Road. And again, these are going to quickly make their way to the east here. Sundance Air Park. If you live near there, these storms are probably going to move in within the next 30 seconds or so. Otherwise, putting on a storm track or putting on a, uh, a little line here, when you start to see the radar, Doing this number where it starts to bow out. We call this at least a bow echo, and that is usually where some of the strongest winds are located. So we're going to see these strong winds move through northern parts of Oklahoma County here, and I expect that, again, this will be primarily a strong wind threat. Storms continue from Richland, just west of Yukon. Yukon, the rain is now beginning to pick up. I 40, we're beginning to see the heavy rainfall moving in, and we're just minutes away from the heavy rain making its way near the outlet shops. And as you get yourself in towards eastern parts of Canadian County, Dave Valaga and Bree Steffen, they are on I-40 looking at these storms from near El Reno. So they are on the other side of these storms. And certainly every now and then you can see some lightning. But uh, I-40 has had some issues throughout the evening. Out near Clinton and Weatherford, we had three semis that were blown over as winds of about 70 to 80 miles per hour moved right on through. Back over to Advantage Doppler 3D here. We're seeing at least a small hail cord just southwest of Mustang down towards Tuttle. As we pull on out, put a storm track on here. This will move into Edmond at 1107. So in the next 20 minutes, the wind is really going to begin to pick up in Edmond, downtown Oklahoma City at 1111, Midwest City, 1121, Choctaw High School at about 1130. So again, these storms are going to just blow right on through the metro again with some strong winds and otherwise some frequent cloud to ground lightning. Here's another bow echo right here from Bridge Creek down to Blanchard, Chickasha. When you see the radar making that backward C like that, again, you have some strong winds that are wrapping right on right on through here. And again, these winds are going to be in the range of 60 to 70 miles per hour, putting a storm track, and this will impact uh, McLean and Cleveland County. We're looking at Blanchard at about 1056, Newcastle right at 11 o'clock here, Sooner Mall, 1110, Norman, OU at about 1114, Stanley Draper Lake, 1123, Lake Thunderbird at 1130 here. So here's that line of storms that basically extends from Enid. All the way on the Chickasha and in between Lawton and Bray here. And again, a closer inspection and update now with these storms. Again, it is raining and it's coming down pretty heavily right now in Richland, Yukon, southwest of Mustang. And again, it won't be long before we are looking at these storms all over the metro here. And it's going to be moving in pretty quickly. So it will rain for about 30 to 45 minutes and then it'll let up. So again, it looks like certainly strong winds will be our biggest concern with these storms as they move right on through. The tornado risk is very low. Again, we're really looking out for the strong wind threat here. And some poor drainage areas will get some ponding out there. As we look at a live tower cam right now, looking west towards these storms, you can see the clouds are starting to at least get a little bit lower. So we are going to be looking for some reduced visibility in a little while here. And all this will have an impact on your morning commute. The roads are going to be wet, 60 degrees, and those winds really begin to pick up. The commute, it's going to be iffy out there. It's not going to be the best. You will be using your windshield wipers from time to time. The rain's going to be coming in sideways because of the winds picking up 25 and gusting to 40 and 50 miles per hour tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be a disgusting day out there, 60 degrees. For a low tonight, 60 degrees at 8 a.m. Raining again, winds up around 40 miles per hour at noon. It will be wet. The rain's coming in sideways, only 55 degrees. It will be dreary. It will not be a fun day outside at all. And still going to have some showers out there at 5 o'clock. And those winds still around 20 to 40 miles per hour. Chilly day tomorrow. Dress for it. Highs in the 60s, but winds around 20 to 40 will not make it feel nice at all. So, 5 plus 5 as we look at the next 10 days here. 60 degrees only for a high tomorrow. That's going to occur early in the day, and then it's going to, uh, temperatures are going to drop, and then we'll see them climb back up. But then after tomorrow, we go through a nice quiet weather pattern. Things begin to feel pretty nice out there, a lot more like fall. We are in the mid to upper 70s, 78 by Friday, making plans for the weekend. Again, beautiful weekend. Do something outside. Highs in the mid to upper 70s. Temperatures cool off a little bit by next week. And you're up to date with the latest first alert forecast.